London Fashion Week men's. Oh, yeah. London Fashion Week has kicked off last week. Um, I should have probably realized when I was coming back from my DJ set on the Saturday, I kind of bumped into a couple of friends who were going to shows. I think they were going to go see... Who are they going to go see? Someone. Um, and then a couple of other people I saw walking around who looked quite fashionable, uh, more so than people, you know, would look on Bethnal Green. People were usually quite dusty, so people looked quite a bit shiny. People had, the, you know, their blogger clothes on. So I should have kind of assumed that Fashion Week was starting, but I kind of forgot came back, logged into Now Fashion and saw all the shows updating. So that was quite a nice surprise. A couple of shows that I saw that were I was interested in that kind of, you know, tickled me fancy. Um that I kind of always kind of look out for. Just to get up on your screen so I can kind of run through a couple of collections that I like. That I like, that I like, that I like. Number one, Liam Hodges. A London designer who I don't think gets the credit he probably deserves. Um I think for the most part, he's probably one of the most more interesting creators out there. Somebody that I've kind of personally known over the years, kind of from just hanging out around Dawson and those kind of areas he's always been about. Um, and just generally a cool dude who makes really interesting clothes, I think, for the most part. And um, he presented his full winter collection in London the other day. I'm going to get up here on the screen. Some very interesting pieces for those of you that are interested. So I like this, these trousers we've got here in look one, sort of like a uh, tie-dye effect it looks like, right? I like that as well, with a long sleeve top on it. You've got the same sort of thing with the with the kind of denim suit here. I love the I love what he's done here with the camo, if you can see that here. it's It looks like it, it's just tie-dye too. Okay, when I looked at the pictures earlier, I thought it was patched on, but it is tie-dyed as well, which looks amazing. I, I don't see people do that too often with a camo. So he's kind of done it in in patterns or in blocks. I'm assuming maybe he's put something to cover the panels or maybe he's done it with a brush. He's kind of dipped um, bleach on a brush and sort of like brushed it down and those kind of on um, those kind of segments to kind of create this nice little grid frame and you get different sort of like, you know, tones of camo on there. So that's really cool. I like the look of that. Um, again, tracksuits are always a very strong um, motif when it comes to Liam Hodges. Loads of great little sportswear. Uh, streetwear kind of pieces on there loads of nice accessories i love what he's done here with the contact lenses here one light one dark that looks really cool and just generally like a really nice collection and also like the trainers too there's something here that uh, i think kind of similar to the raf moon boots that were a couple seasons ago i think when there's i think it's like a visual trick isn't it with shoes where if you kind of make if you kind of make the outsole the midsole and a bit of the foxing a uh, contrasting color to the upper you can kind of create like a weird sort of like a duck booty kind of shape feel so you can even do it with converses which are fairly thin you can kind of make the give the illusion that it looks a, bit, a lot thicker than what it does which looks really cool um again some nice looks here with waistcoats again the sportswear pieces are always very very um interesting i like them into material on these pants here they look very cool and yeah it's, just in general, a very, very cool collection and, and always really cool casting too. I, don't, I think that's something you're always going to see in London, runway shows. You're never going to see the kind of whitewashing that you see in kind of Milan or you kind of see in Paris sometimes regarding, uh, the, depending on the designer. The one thing, even though maybe London might be a bit rough on the edges, it might be a bit eccentric, it might be a bit wild for some people. What you do see that's something that I do love is that you do see the London streets reflected in the runway. You see the kids that would wear that kind of thing or the, the, the kids that the designer would want to be part of his world reflected into the clothes. And it's always multicultural, it's always multiracial. It just, again, it just represents, without being cliche, without kind of, you know, ticking the quota boxes, it's just a, re a reflection of where they are. Because most of these designers have studios and really fucked up parts of london because that's the cheapest place so you can get rent and you're passing these people day in day out why not take inspiration from them why not kind of put that kind of patina on your mood board instead of kind of having it be completely whitewashed so it's nice to see in general the kind of you know the cast is always interesting but again liam hodges is always somebody that does it right anyway in that, in that respect so let me check it out again this this camera piece is so good i love what he's done here with the with, the, with I'm, sh I'm assuming it is dip dyed uh, or tie dyed i'm assuming so i'm not sure how that's done but that's fucking cool Army green is. Um, I'm, I might try that with uh, some pants if I get a pair. Army green and just kind of get a brush, dip it in. That. Would that work? I'm not. I'm not sure if it would, but maybe you'd have to kind of dilute the bleach a little bit more. But yeah, it looks amazing. They've got a nice little Lisi collaboration here. I'm assuming with tracksuit, which looks very interesting. Um, I'm sure that's going to be very successful when that comes out. I'm assuming the shoes are a Lisi too. They don't look. Yeah, they, they are. They've got the little. Um, you can see the logo there. So yeah, overall, very cool collection from Liam Hodges. So I recommend you check that one out. Again, this is a great look. A tie dye with a with the striped long sleeve looks fucking awesome. 
so I recommend you check that out very very soon again everything there looks banging oh yeah, and again this last this is one of my favorite looks here this sort of like purple tie-dye suit overall it looks so so cool i'm de we're definitely you're definitely gonna see a few artists of your favorite artists that you like wearing that sort of top and again nice sort of logo t-shirts here the martians are coming to save the earth so yeah i recommend you check that out liam hodges is one of my faves there um what else who else did i like here get up on the screen da, 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 da. um oh eat eat i don't know how you pronounce it eat torts eat eat twats eat torts someone i've always kind of liked the look of the shoes and and, and like um well the collection i like the shoes in this collection overall um so it's is it E T A U T Z? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. E T A U T Z. But I like the I like this collection very, very, very much. Just because um I forgot who it was. Uh, what collect? Who what designer was it? It might have been Jill Sander. It might have been somebody else. But I remember seeing this sort of like um aesthetic before on a runway collection, especially with men's. I love the. I love when runway show, especially with designers, kind of uh fuck around with their idea of masculinity, right? So I love the idea like you've got maybe these kind of feminine kind of floaty shapes and then you kind of contrast them with these little thin uh what would you call them arabian slippers these kind of like slim really kind of slipper sock thing with contrasting socks on it or tights that look so so amazing it looks so comfy so cozy like that look here with a suit jacket and the plum pants and the black shoes the contrasting sock just looks amazing you've got this amazing look with the over great overcoat uh, check it over called double breasted black, just just a very an amazing look right so i don't know what the shoot about i forgot who did the collection but it reminded me of like um there's a particular dancer i forgot his name he's like a russian ballerina very very famous he wrote a couple of books or a couple of books have been written about him he kind of think super young for his name and he kind of have same similar sort of look and i remember someone based their collection on him sort of again maybe similar to like high high that i came in in that regard where he sort of like loads of high-waisted trousers to kind of really kind of accentuate the waist and again, to kind of bring out the shoulders or the really drapey shoulder lengths there. But just in general, I love the kind of question of the masculinity. Like this look is looks amazing, right? White, white linen, linen. I'd say I'm not sure if it's linen. Maybe it's linen. Maybe it's not. White pants just looks amazing. Sort of like drop cosh, but a little bit higher waisted. I, f I forgot what that mod, what that model is called. But these looks just look very, very nice, very cozy. Um, again, so I recommend you check that out too. One of my favorites so far. I've seen London E Torts. He twats, he twats, he tweets, twats, twats, how you pronounce it? I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but yeah, this is one of my favorite collections so far that I've seen overall. Again, just messing around with the idea of, of, of masculinity. So it's very um, it's very feminine in some regards, but also very masculine in some regards. Again, let's just look at the color palette here. That's one thing I love with runway shows that I always try and do. Even if I if I can't maybe afford the clothes themselves, I try and just take um, the color palettes and kind of adopt them into my wardrobe because sometimes you know we all have great outfits in our wardrobe but we can't necessarily piece them together in the right way you know so um, working with you know designers usually work with like world-class stylists and they kind of are able to kind of uh, put their looks together in some in some really really creative way but i just love the color palette so you've got this green overcoat um you've got a blue oxford kind of shirt and then you've got these nice blue pants uh pleated at the front right and then they kind of drop down quite low on the shoes black with like contrasting socks just those colors in general blue uh tones of blue and green all kind of in that same sort of patina looks amazing right just looks so so cool again nice color pads again another one here on especially on black skin you've got this nice tartan overcoat with a plum red shirt inside and nice they look like corduroy trousers there and again the same look here too like a denim, blue denim jacket some green pants like you could easily change this for a, a, de a an usual denim look you might have your wardrobe you might have a, a denim jacket in your wardrobe you might have some green chinos from dickies you might have some vans or converse lying on that red you throw on a white t-shirt you've got yourself a nice little look that you didn't know you had in your wardrobe so again that's why i recommend checking out runway shows because you can always steal the color palettes there so that was another one of my favorites and then there was a couple more too that i liked as well I'll quickly check out here that i've seen and i think a cold war showing as well that should be coming up in a couple of hours i think actually if um after this podcast is probably finished they, they will come up too but let me try and quickly scan through now fashion and see what else i liked i think it might have been john lawrence that I thought was super super cool ashley anderson had a really nice collection too probably one of the, the, my favorites 
of hers that I've seen in a long, long while. Um, again, Chalayan, uh, Kiko Konstadinov, how you pronounce his name, he did a very good collection too, but it's always quite cool in that regard. Um, but let me pick out something interesting that I thought was really nice. Oh, my my buddy, my my one of my favorites there. I'll be taking my oh, that's the one my friend saw. Okay, so um, Nicholas, they went to go see Nicholas Daly. A couple of, a couple of my mates know him personally, so they went to go see his show. Um, which I think was on the Saturday actually, so that was um, when people went to go see. But these are the last two I'm going to show that I thought were my interesting favorites. I'm going to pick from the, the first couple of days of London Fashion Week. Number one is Charles uh, Charles Jeffrey Lover Boy. Charles Jeffrey, I met when I used to work in Somerset House for a company I was working through there, like startup there. Um, he had a studio next door to our studio, or maybe upstairs. And um, again, he just uh, I think. If you've ever been in a London scene or you've ever been in any sort of like, you know, main city scene around the world, especially when it comes to fashion, especially if your city has a reputation, usually the people that are associated with that scene can kind of be a little bit up their own ass, right? Um, um, sometimes rightfully so, because, you know, they've, they've been getting loads of applause there, so they've been featured in magazines, people are on their, on their, on them for the most part, they're getting brand sponsorship deals, they're talk of the town, right? Everyone kind of wants to be them, they've got intern requests coming out of their ass, right? It, sometimes you can... I understand why you sometimes can, you know, think your shit doesn't stink. I get it. But then sometimes in in the scene too, you can get surprised and you can sometimes be bumped into somebody who has the world at their feet, who's obviously very talented, but also super cool. And Charles Jeffrey was one of them. Somebody that I kind of always had my eye on beforehand. And then when I kind of realized that he was working next door, I was kind of trying to contain my inner fanboy. And then when we had a Christmas party at Somerset House for, you know, all the kind of studios that are there, I kind of got speaking to him and we kind of had started like kind of, you know, just exchanging um, compliments. And I was complimenting him more so than he was complimenting me. But he just came across as a really cool dude, super nice, super chill. And obviously since then, I've kind of always kept my eye on him and seen what he's done. And as, as of late, his work has just progressed and got better and better and better. I'm assuming with, you know, better access to manufacturing, his clothes just look even more refined than before. But the real treat was working in the studio next door and seeing him kind of designing in real life out loud. He used to kind of get his friends come in as fit models to kind of wear some of the weird and crazy creations that he makes in terms of overcoats and pieces and art pieces. And you see it made in real life. And you're like, fuck, this is amazing. He's getting all his friends to come in and do it. And, um, the, Som the Somerset Studio House, Somerset Studio, um, Somerset House Studios that we were in had his kind of like gangway and used to kind of make his um, fit models walk down and like kind of quote, quote unquote um, make sure run where he had outside of his studios so you got to see that stuff in real life which is a real real privilege so again someone that I've always kind of been a big fan of and he's kind of showed his full wind collection too and again it just, it just keeps building keeps getting better and better and better and I think over time we're going to see um, Charles um, Jeffrey kind of you know eventually kind of seeping into the mainstream if it hasn't already uh, in the first place so this is his um uh for winter collection i'll get up here on the screen go back to the looks here it's annoying when now fashion does that it kind of auto plays the looks which is annoying it's really annoying when it kind of has a the main look you want on the left hand side but hey ho what can you do so um loved all the looks for the most part i love that he was always kind of harking back to his scottish roots scotland right loads of tartan included there i love the fact that he's always kind of wearing kilts as well at the end of the shows but what really stood out for me is obviously the tartan looks for the men's looks are look probably some of the best stuff i've seen in a while um i think easily this logo lover boy i'm sure he hasn't done it because he probably doesn't want to be a logo heavy dude but if you got that printed on a shirt on a hoodie um and he had it fit a particular way maybe it had a secret couple of compartments maybe it was, i don't know glittery i think he'd sell these things like hotcakes like lover boy in front of a shirt would just look so so cool um so yeah this tartan suit looks amazing but what really stands out for me is the shoes I love the shoes. The shoes is amazing. All the footwear in this collection looks fucking a banging. I'm not sure if it's a collaboration. I'm not sure what if this kind of stuff is always made in house, but the shoes look fucking sick. In every, in every look that I've seen so far, those are my standard, I think, so far. And obviously some of the accessories, but the shoes look are probably the most best thing here. I love this earring here on the side as well. Is that an earring or is that something that's on, on hanging off the hat? I'm not sure. sure. But yeah, looks are just incredible as always. All the men's look kind of mixed in with a few women's looks too. Again, uh, loads of tartan here loads of chains the boots the shoes just look really cool um again just like really interesting looks i love this suit here it looks incredible and again just this look it just looks so nice no head to toe something that if i was nice i'd easily wear go stay away from all that gucci shit support somebody that's local and look at this this is amazing and the boots too i just love the look of these they just they, they kind of look like hippo hip, hippo feet right or walled feet i love it like square toe 
I'm a big. I think there was um was it a Margiela boot or somebody made a boot recently like a Chelsea boot that had like an ex- like a exaggerated rectangle square toe. I really like that, especially coming from you know the past era so far. Everyone's been kind of really pointy as per usual in the toes. I kind of like the exaggerated square toe, which I think would work really well if they would decide to do it. Which I don't think I'm not sure Nike would ever do it. But if Nike ever decided to do like a designer range or Air Force Ones, right? I think they could easily do a, an Air Force One tabby boot, like take inspiration from the, from the tabby from Margiela. And I could easily think they could do exaggerated shapes. Like, you know how um, Comme des Garçons did the massive toy in the front of the Air Force One? Imagine just a really squared off Air Force One shape, like exaggerated. So maybe underneath, as you're wearing it, it looks the same, but there might be a little pocket around the front that makes it look completely squared off. I think that would look super sick. But again, this look looks amazing. I love this look with a jumper uh, tucked, into the, t- tucked into the kilt amazing too with no pleats as well which is nice little look there a couple of uh, little slit here on the side but looks nice overall and chain detail there again nice look for the men's nice bit of bondage there with the with the ropes all over the jacket we could say for the most part again a nice little outfit there overcoat with the nice boots just the footwear is just incredible in the whole collection, I think. Probably my stand-up piece. I love the look with the tartans and the socks pulled up. The socks are amazing, actually. Love boy socks. They look fucking awesome. They look really, really cool. And again, nice boots. This is probably my favorite look. This tartan overcoat just looks splendid with a massive silver chain. Looks like on the front here. Maybe that's a uh, fastening detail. Again, the boots, the shoes just look incredible. I love the shoes so, so much. Again, just great, great looks overall. One of my favorite London designers by far, uh, Charles Jeffrey, I love a boy. Recommend you check that out. Full winner collection, just absolutely insane. Look at this headpiece here. So cool. Um, overall, one of my favorite pieces. One of my favorite collections. Out. Again, these jumpers just look so good. Again, color palettes. Even if you probably can't afford the entire look or get the whole entire look, I just love that as a color palette, right? Those that stripy jumper, blue, red and black, nice high waisted, uh, grey pants. I love the detail here. Contrast stitching is coming back. Big up uh, Phoebe Philo um, for that as well. Lover boy t-shirts here. So loads of graphic. Maybe so, some graphic tees are coming in. I like that belt too. It looks really nice. Um, nice little detail there as well. Actually, with the tartan thing hanging off the side of the trousers. So yeah, I can't wait to see um, what the stores buy of these actually collection. I'm not sure if everything's going to go into production. Hopefully it does. But again, the shoes. Look at the shoes. Look at the shoes. Look at the shoes. With the, is that a massive zip on the front? I'm not too sure. That just looks amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. All good. So yeah, check out, I recommend you check it out. Charles Jeffrey Loverboy. One of my favorite collections so far of uh, London Men's Fashion Week. Um, and again, there is the main man there himself. Always looks incredibly dapper. I think that's another thing too. I want to go back to the era of designers that look incredible in their own clothes, that wear their own collections, right? Wear your stuff, man. Look, look how it look. He's, he's the perfect, he's the perfect ambassador for Loverboy. Look at look how it look good it looks on him. It's like um, um Alessandro Michelli, the, the guy for Gucci. When he comes out at the end, he's probably one of the best dressed people wearing Gucci every day because he looks amazing in his own clothes. Charles Jeffrey is in that same vein. And then last but not least, my other um, my other favorite I thought was really, really good collection was John Lawrence. He did an amazing collection, I think, where he had um, a band player. I forgot the name of the band. What was a band that was playing for the John Lawrence show? Uh, damn, forgot the name of the band. But anyway, um, there was a band playing as well during during the performance of the show. Um, but I, lo- I love the looks overall. It reminded me a lot of like old school Heidi. At, 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 at Corey Dior, maybe some, uh, maybe a little little bit of number nine, maybe a little bit of soloist involved. Um, I just love that aesthetic in general. So yeah, I recommend you check this out too. John Lawrence for winter. Loads of nice looks, loads of snake skin, loads of leopard, um, loads of cheetah. Just an amazing, amazing collection. Loads of things that shouldn't really go together, going together really well. Um, again, just pure filth. Love it. Love everything about it. Again, great footwear, massive boots, looks like this look just look incredible nice cheetah overcoat leather pants derby boots just looks incredible all of it so and again casting just amazing this is where it is where you see london show just looks very interesting casting level and again look look at this look with a nice jumper with it looks is it like is it pvc is that satin not too sure with these boots as well again it's just i love the blending of the femininity and the masculinity right with the eyeshadow and the way that guy looks kind of semi-androgynous, the the jumper, especially with the contrasting, with the color blocking here towards the bottom, kind of looks like it's cropped, but it's not cropped. These pants, 
and then tucked into his really aggressive army boots just looks amazing 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 all together one of my favorite collections out so far in london fashion week so again recommend you check these all out all available on nowfashion.com that's why i usually check out all my runway shows because vogue looks a bit annoying since style.com disappeared vogue fashion way runways i'm not really a fan of so recommend you check out now for fashion fashion updates all their collections really quickly as well when they're out so recommend you check that out again another favorite look here you could easily get something like this in the high street if you looked hard enough. Um, you could easily get this maybe in a vintage shop. This sort of like top again, copy the looks, but um, just in general, uh, expert styling, man. One of my favorite collections. So you've got sort of like a cheetah sort of print here, top, I think, for the most part, a lion top. And then these nice leather pants, boots again. So it looks like a lot of boots are going to be coming back. Chelsea boots, lots of big rugged boots. No more pointy toes, sort of like Saint Laurent Wyatt boots are kind of in fashion. Everyone's sort of doing really chunky uh, Chelsea boots, which is a nice little change from regular schedule programming. It's recommended again, you check that out. John Lawrence. Oh, yeah, um, that was a band that I was playing, Wild Daughter. They were playing towards the, the side as well, the collection. There's the main the head designer there. Looks incredible as per usual. Again, recommend you check that out. John Lawrence for Winter Collection. That's my runway pick so far.